The motivational factor for myself in this process is purely selfishly to help my son. The possibility of helping other children too is, is, is incredibly rewarding in itself. Nothing like this has ever been done before in prosthetics. I'm Ben, father of two and founder and CEO of Ambionics. Kate and I had been trying for a few years before we knew it, we found that we were blessed. So Kate found out within two weeks that she was pregnant. When I found out it was a boy, I was even more excited. It was a very long labor, so we hadn't had any sleep for about 48 hours. Um, but we knew something was wrong very, very early on. I remember feeling like I was in a dream. The surgeons at Old Day said, you know, Sol was gonna lose his left arm. My baby was hours old. Too much time had passed between him being born and sustaining an injury and actually having anything done. One day when a nurse came into Sol's room, uh, they said, we've got some information on his blood type. We know he's B positive. I think partly because I was clutching at straws, I just took that as a sign um, and I just stopped thinking about all the things he, he was no longer going to be able to do. I just ploughed into what I could do rather than what Sol couldn't do. And that gave me massive hope. Sol was in uh, Alder Hay for the first five weeks of his life. And when we came home, I noticed that his left arm, he just wasn't using it at all. It wasn't moving. It was just staying motionless by his side. So I went into the kitchen and took a, just a normal 20 pence kitchen scourer and fashioned a makeshift forearm. Within minutes, he was playing with both arms. I knew that what was happening in his brain, that he was now starting to form links between events in the world and his own body movements. We introduced certain activities, which we still do. There was a pattern of children just disengaging with prosthetics at the age of two, so I started saying, well, that's not gonna happen to my son. And I came up with a completely different approach. By using my own knowledge of psychology and trying to intervene, you should do as much as possible at the earliest technological level. The NHS weren't going to provide a myoelectric arm until he was three, so I wanted to try and get some function installed as quickly as possible. I was actually sleeping in here at the time, um, and I looked up on the ceiling and I saw a spider, and it just immediately brought back a memory about spiders using fluid pressure. I just thought immediately, one of the things Sol can do is squish a bag of fluid. Spiders have been around for about 650 million years. There probably isn't a more efficient way of doing it than that, and I proceeded to try and to create a body-powered hydraulic device using off-the-shelf parts. I've managed to add in the hydraulics, add in a movable thumb and all of the mechanisms and I'm starting to then print those out and I made the first working prototype the first week of August last year. The part that stands out most for me was back in December, we'd created a prototype to take to Genesis in London and Sol had been watching me design this on a computer and he kept pointing to the screen. He could see this arm, he recognised what it was and he could see it in 3D and he kept pointing at the screen saying arm. So I thought it'd be nice to actually create this arm keep it behind the laptop one night and pretend to be working on it. And when Sol pointed at the screen, I reached behind and pulled out the arm, put it on, and it fit like a glove, obviously, because it was scanned to his dimensions. But just to see Sol, that, that, you know, that genuine look of elation on his face as he's got something uh, with a movable thumb, <laughs> is, uh, that made it all worthwhile. Got the cool arm, is that your arm? Give me a knuckle bump.